Integrate yourself, everybody. I'm your host, Allison Polo, and you can find me at pureenergypdx.com. Today, I'm here with the most special guest, Von Galt. She is author of uh, Buddhist Mandalas, Exploring Parallel Realities with Sacred Geometry. We're going to talk a lot about this book today. She's also written a book called Buddhist Guide to Manifest Parallel Realities. And uh, she's working on her next, her second book of the Buddhist mandalas. Um, she's an author. And um, we're, today we're going to discuss the new tools of the fifth dimension to thrive. Um, and, you know, uh, she talks in her books about how to manifest parallel realities using the four noble truths and eightfold path in the age of consciousness. Um, and then we're going to also talk about Buddhist mandalas today and how um, I've heard her describe that as um, sacred geometry as an energy signature, which is really cool. I can't wait to get deeper into that. Um, Vaughn earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from University of Washington and earned her MBA in e-business management from Westwood College of Technology. Aside from being an author, she is a working mom in the IT industry, and she lives in Seattle, Washington with her husband and two children. Let's welcome Von Galt. Thank you, Von, for coming on. I'm so excited. I was so excited to be connected with you through another podcast and then be able to um, get your books. And once I got your books, um, first of all, I was blown away by your show that I heard on the uh, tinfoil hat and then um, had to get your book because I had to know more. It was just mind blowing. So thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm, I, I love, love to talk about metaphysics. I love, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah it's such a treat. I, I love it too. I really do. I, it's just, it's, it's amazing. There's always so many, many layers to go on that one for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And every single layer is fun and exciting. And when you, when people get to the space in their, um, spiritual understanding of the dharma and and dharma is just a buddhist word for reality um it would just blow your mind and as they engage with the experiential reality and um work with it it, it just continues to unfold and just you know it is a wild ride so um you know there's there's going to be a lot of hope <laughs> I, yeah <laughs> of oh my this. gosh i cannot you, wait you, yeah so yeah. if you're if, if 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 you're someone who um likes the dire doomsday, you know, <laughs> off, the, off the seat of your pants kind of stuff. I'm probably not the type of medicine because um, um, I know even more than that. And it's very, very positive. We're in um, a wonderful time and a great uh, transformation. Yeah. So, and so the Buddhists are very, and many, many other indigenous cultures throughout the world are very, very excited about being in the fifth dimension. Mm, yes, we're going to talk about that today. I cannot wait. And, you know, a lot of people, we have talked about the fifth dimension before on the show. Uh, my friend Roseanne talked about it a couple of times. Uh, she came on a couple of times and talked about it. And I want to get into it today with you um, because you have, you literally have a guide to navigating the fifth dimension and you have tools that you recommend for people. Um, but first, before we even start down that road, um, I wanted to find out like how you got started in this work because you have, I know that you also do flower arrangements for weddings and you're in IT. <laughs> and so like, how did you get into uh, Buddhist mandalas and, and all of the, in writing even about it? Yeah, so um, so just a, a quick recap for people who I might be new to and my material, my material is new to. Um, and again, I always tell people, listen, you're going to get all the material on this, on many of my interviews through my channel. You can go, go to the website. All the material is already there. And if you want to geek out and go even further, read the books. But it, um, so there's plenty of free material and stuff. If you spend the time, you're going to get that material already. And then if you want even more, you can get, there's even more on the books and there's more books coming along the way as well. So, um, cause some people go, oh, she's just trying to pawn her books off to everybody. So, 
So just just know that there's plenty of uh, material already for you. But you know, as you get into this space, you're going to want to know more about it, and you're going to probably love metaphysics as much as I do. But basically, how I got started in this is I am I am Laos, and um, I was born into the Buddhist tradition through my family. Uh, it is a, the spiritual practice that we do is, is Buddhism. And so I'm used to all this material growing up. And oftentimes um, in the monasteries that I would attend, um, in the, and we went to a couple of different ones, and we also have ones in Laos as well, because my family helps support the um, construction and um, the rebuild of different ones in Laos as well. So it Growing up and going to attending all these different temples and monasteries in Buddhism, um, many of the monks would kind of teach the basics of Buddhism. And, and you're going to get this in a lot of Buddhist literature now, um, where you get the basics of certain techniques, you get the basic practice of how to be compassionate, the basic practice of meditation, just the basics, because most people just need the basics just to mm -hmm. learn how to not create um, negative imbalance issues in their lives to make this incarnation unreasonable or unbearable and then maybe create imbalance that they may reincarnate again into the next lifetime wherever it is whether it's on earth or some other dimension or other planet to imbalance the the issues that they created in this life so a lot mm -hmm. of the basics is what you're going to get but I already knew the basics growing up okay so I got that don't be a douchebag <laughs> really simple All yeah right, that's don't, simple mm -hmm. simple don't yeah. be a douchebag talk to right. people you know basics I'm like okay so I kind of diverged off growing up and I would start studying uh, I would go into libraries um, in these monasteries and that most children never go into and most adults never go into because I remember the sitting for the basics yeah and if you go to any church, it's always basics, <laughs> whatever church it is. That's very true. Yeah. It doesn't matter what church, it's always the basics. So, um, but I got the basics. So I would diverge off and I would, I would study the books and I would look at the pictures because I really love the pictures. And a lot of the pictures in the murals, in the art, um, on the temples, everywhere, a lot of them, and you'll see this if you look at enough Buddhist um, even Hindu artwork, which Buddhism is an offshoot of Hinduism, you'll see that a lot of it is very, very metaphysical. And mm -hmm. a lot of the teachings about the Dharma and how to create the Dharma or your reality um, and how to be multidimensional is already right in front of you in the artwork. You just have oh, to right. know what you're looking for and you yeah. need to ask the questions. Why does this person have multiple versions of themselves? Why is this person oh. on different dimensions? Why are the Buddhas in different dimensions? What is this around their head? What is this around, you know? So I asked those questions growing mm -hmm. up and I got those questions because I was the only one that was asking them because I got bored of the basics. And so <laughs> I knew this growing up. and. Um, you know, and then I just went to college, did the normal stuff, met my my spouse, have kids, got into a, a career in IT, which I do enjoy because it's very, it allows me creative pursuits. And um, I followed about 20 or, or more years of scientific collaboration between different Buddhist nuns and monks and also different um, priests in different religions as well as they were working with different academic institutions around the world to study mm -hmm. mindfulness, meditation, the science of compassion, those kind of things. And um, what came through is all this material that further backed up a lot of the esoteric um, concepts in Buddhism and even clarified some of the understandings so that we can actually see, oh, this is just science-based living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and this is why Buddha and all the teachers in Buddhism and even in the Hindu ancient Hinduism keep telling people, um, stop praying to the gods because you are it. You're a fractal expression of consciousness, and you are creating it from within your consciousness, mm -hmm. and you could do it yourself. And um, 
And in, all of this is an exercise uh, for your own enjoyment and personal development. So, I mean, the, this stuff was proven in the science. And so I, what I done is I took all that information and I put it in that book, um, Buddhist Mandalas, Explore yeah. Parallel Realities with Sacred Geometry. And so if you want to geek out on the science behind what is a mandala, what is a Merkaba, um, all of this stuff that we talk about, it's all in that book. And there's actually two more books coming out as well that I'm working on because I've got so much data um that i had to break it up into three book volumes so it's a trinity oh my god that's amazing and and i was reading i just kind of started the the buddhist mandala book um but i know that you you talk about heart math and I'm, i've been familiar with them for a long time and they're and they kind of demonstrated on a, a scientifically the heart has its own frequency that uh really connects um on a deeper level with people even more than the mind right Mm -hmm. If you put that book um, image up mm -hmm. of, 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 of Buddhist mandalas, uh -huh. I'm going to give the people a very basic, and this is the why this is the image that is very synonymous in Buddhism and Hinduism. All the teachers have two circle auras around them. Right. One big one, as you see, this is Kuan Yin, which was just a very famous female Buddha. Mm -hmm. um, and Buddha in Buddhism is just a Sanskrit word for um being awake, being awake within the matrix. And um, anyways, in the image of the Buddhist mandalas, she has the halo around the head, which everyone scientifically, it's already been proving, has an energy field around your head. That's like the EGE, um, oh, the energy that comes out. Now, what they found also in science, and this matches up to all of the Buddhist artwork, is that your heart, has an energy field that's 10 or 5,000 times stronger than the energy field that comes out of your head. And so if you notice in the book cover and in all Buddhist art, everyone also has a huge halo around their body. Mm -hmm. And right in the center is your heart. Mm. Yes. Okay. So yes. it's right there in front of you. That's amazing. That, that is your energy field and people can feel it. They can mm. sense it. When you come across somebody who has high energy um, and a good heart, you just, you just feel lighter. You feel more inspired. You just feel the resonance and you're going to try to match up to that resonance because you feel their energy field. Um, and in Buddhism, we call it your mandala. And um, in Hinduism, um, they call your Sri Yantra. Um, in Zen, they would call you yin yang. Um, in uh, Judaism, they would call it your Merkaba. Ah, okay. It's all the same thing. In Native American, they would call it the whirling, whirling log, which, oh. um, which the, the term uh, has been hijacked as a swastika. But oh, it's, right. You know, it's the same thing. It's the spinning of the energy field. And the energy field actually spins like an apple. Oh, so okay. if you look at if you look at that book, and you go further into it, I go into how all the different religions in the world that talk about sacred geometry in the text from one prophet to another one teacher to another. Um, they're just looking at the same thing in a different way. And I show the science behind how that works in your body. Mm, cool. Yeah. Um, and so all it's really saying all these different religions all these religions are saying the same scientific information that I've proven in that book scientifically is that everyone is energy. Mm -hmm. That's all you are, yeah. your energy. Okay. Yeah. I remember you saying that too. Um, you said energy, really energy is the, is more real than what we're seeing, right? Is that where you, I can't, I yeah. don't know exactly, I can't remember exactly how you put it, but I was just like, oh, that's how I've always felt, but I'm, I was never able to really, you know, um, you know, prove that, I guess, concretely yeah, until I started paying it. attention yeah. to it. Yeah. 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 So all that research basically came in to just to show that, and I've proven that in that book, that all these different sacred symbol systems are basically pointing to the fact that we are all energy. And that is who we really are. Mm -hmm. So whatever your form in this lifetime, 
you're a white woman, I'm an Asian woman. We've had other lives prior mm -hmm. to this earthly incarnation. And if you do past life regression or any kind of hypnosis regression, uh, many people will get other lives of being other races, other mm -hmm. cultures, sometimes even um, quote, unquote alien species from different dimensions, different um, planet systems, et cetera. It, it, runs the gamut. You've been infinite before this life and you'll be infinite after this life. And that's all it's really saying is you are energy and you are whatever story you're playing into or whatever. Um, I use video game terms because a lot of there's a lot of young people that follow my stuff and they totally get the video game stuff. So all oh, right, what, what makes that it makes easy sense. for them. It makes it easy. So whatever sim or avatar Oh, yeah. um, that you are. It's just for the experience that you're having now for whatever purpose you chose to have this life for. So um, it's just like if you're going scuba diving, you need the appropriate equipment to get the best experience. Yeah. When that's, you go scuba that's diving, it's the same exact thing. Yeah. But the thing, the thing is, is that if you didn't understand that everybody's energy and what you are lifetime after lifetime or even in the spirit world or non-spirit world is the same energy um then you're going to get caught up in your avatar you're going to get caught up in your story and you're going to forget that and that's what we've done over this time is we've forgotten like literally that we are souls we are energy having a human experience we're yeah. taking it too damn serious, people. <laughs> we are. Okay? We are, totally. Take it too serious. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right? So that's what we are. So when you realize that and you look at the science behind it, you'll see that all these religions worldwide, and if you look into ancient archaeology, which is another book I'm working on, um, these symbols of sacred geometry also show up as decoration in ancient archaeology going farther further back into some of the oldest archaeology that we've had so they've known about this before but yeah. for whatever reason we lost it um from huh. the mega flood or whatever disasters but that's in a different book but it has been around it's just kind of it kind of resurfaces and we can find this over we keep finding this truth over and over again but then some reason we keep forgetting it as a human society so i found this again put the <laughs> pieces together for everyone if you need the book to knock over your head then do could do that it's a nice 400 page thick book okay <laughs> on your noggin hmm. that you are so having a human experience and yeah. so everybody everybody's so everybody's mandala just like in Buddhism, um, what they used to do is they used to um, do harmonics or they still do that to the oh, singing yeah. bowls or they would um, use a tonoscope or sand plate to um, put in the vibration of whatever they're focusing on and it would immediately create an image. It mm -hmm. would create like a mandala, a unique one to that the energy signature. And they would draw that out really, really quickly and that would be the image that they get. And that's how they got oh. the image of the Sri Yantra, the yin yang, all these different things. And that's also how they get the image of the mandala of their teachers. So we're in the 21st century and we could do that through science now. There's actually a company called Cymos Cymoscope and mm -hmm. they do um, research of, in frequencies for medical, but they have also come out on their website, soundmadevisible.com. And you can go in and you can, um, for, for that service, you can just record your voice and everybody's voice has a unique energy mm -hmm. signature, yes. unique to you. So just like snowflakes, everybody has a unique one. Yeah. And you can send it in and they will send you back oh, what your mandala looks that like. That is so cool. So you can see what your energy looks like. Lifetime of a lifetime. That's oh you. Oh my God. But and what's this website again? It's oh, called wow. Sound Made Visible. I actually, actually, visible. If, um, I actually have, I have mine and my husband's. I could bring it over really quick. Oh yeah. I'd love to see that. Over. Oh my God. I'm One so moment. Okay, so I, so I, this is most Christmas presents. 
<laughs> it's a great present. It I is. Like it. We're going into the holidays. This is a great present for the spiritual family or friend <laughs> that you don't know who what to get for them because they oh, really are so, that. they're not very attached to anything material. So they're like, ah, oh, get me a meditation retreat session or something, right. you know, or here's some yoga classes or whatever. So for, for those people that, that you don't really know, my husband's always like, I don't know what to get you. And so I'm like, oh, I'll just get this. And, um, but anyway, so he got me this. And if you go to the website, Sound Made Visible, this is, makes the fun part of spirituality. You record your, your voice. Um, I said my name, Vaughn, and then, um, you know, different yeah. things. And I send it in and um, your voice will, will be registered. And then they would, when they play your voice into their cymoscope machine which is like a sand plate or singing bowls but they have electronic mm -hmm. it will automatically pump out a picture oh and that is your mandala that is your what they call <sighs> your dna voice signature and everybody has a unique one and the more energy that somebody is mm -hmm. um the more higher calibrating their Merkaba is or the energy field is, um, the more um, information is stored in that energy field. Oh, wow. Okay. It's, it's yeah. more dense. So I, huh. so there's, here's mine. Oh, wow. That's, that's Ooh, right. Okay. <laughs> I can, reflection. there you go. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's reflection. beautiful. Oh my so that, God. That, that's me. When I say my name, Vaughn, this is what comes up. Oh my goodness. And, um, I should get the oh, picture, wow. but I've done some in, in interviews. But anyways, the the what I love about about my mandala is that it actually has the Buddhist symbols in it. Oh, so this is God. the eight wheel rod of Dharma. So the you know, and then on the top oh. of each rod is a lion's head. Oh my God! I see that. Oh geez, please, lion's please. head on top. Wow! If you look at all uh, Buddhist artwork, they always have the eight wheel rod of dharma for that that's that cycle and then the lion's head as the the teachers oh my god <laughs> and then and then that's incredible uh, there's the trumpets or the the, the sound on the, each side and then um this is actually two-dimensional but people if you read in my book Buddhist mandalas people are bubbles your energy mm. field is a big bubble mm -hmm. and so this is just cutting it in half but um but each wow. line um is a bubble of energy and I have 12 intersecting nodes of energy um, which is like the 12 Nanandas in Buddhism the 12 characteristics that cause you to come in back over and over again so my mandala says the teachings of Buddhism which is all my Buddhist mandala book so go read <laughs> I'm not going to teach you. You can learn yourself. The, book, oh, the information wow. is there. Um, but but I've done the, the work and now you can read and you can create your reality how you want. This is my husband. This is my husband. Oh, that's pretty. That's and, beautiful. And, yeah. yeah. And um, my husband, because you get to pick your colors. Yeah. My husband, he, he chose, because you get a couple of different. Oh, images. you get to pick your colors. You're saying, okay. Yeah, you get yeah, to pick yeah. your colors. Oh, but my okay. husband, my husband, if you look up into these areas, Mm -hmm. it's forming a lion oh yeah okay so it's starting he's starting to form his he's starting okay. to form his yeah and i've done past life regression <clears throat> future life regression um life between life regression and my husband and i have been married many many times in different <laughs> lives we have been <clears throat> many different storylines we have been many different races oh wow we yeah. have played the game quite a bit at different times which is funny because there's a lot of synchronicities in how we met too so it's almost like it was planned yeah. a little bit because it's just too ironic and i've done interviews on that as well but we've been together many different times and so of course the person i am supposed to be with is going to calibrate at very much the same mandala as i am so a lot of people oh, yeah. actually attract to them like energy yeah, I feel like so, that with my husband too. I think. Yeah, so you together. and your husband, you guys should get your mandalas in this. <laughs> I were get, going to. That's gonna. That's gonna be the Christmas gift right there. I think. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. You you do it. They send it back to you. I don't know in a week or two. Okay. And then, and then they get, that's your image. And then you can. I I use Shutterfly, but you can use any kind of um, photo service. And you, okay. You send in the image. Um, and, and they, for a metal plate, which is the, the best one that they say to, 
to get it um, printed at. And then mm -hmm. you print it, and then I just took to I took it to a, a Michaels or a craft store and spent ten dollars oh, for the frame yeah. to put it together, and boom. Yeah, it's perfect. Like, That's awesome. So, I love it. So yeah, so it's it's a fun fun holiday gift or any kind of gift for that spiritual person that you just don't know what to get them yeah so get that's them a, a great picture. gift yeah, i didn't even know that existed so that's now amazing. you know now well i always know. heard about your your uh your voice um how did you put it your voice signature like you have a unique your dna voice signature yeah um and finding that like is important for everybody to you know connect with and so i i really teach i've started implementing in my um nutrition course actually uh voice toning so that it kind of it actually uh helps with the parasympathetic nervous system and the vagal the vagus uh nerve just to calm everything down right um because that kind of thing can help with it too but at, at the same time people are also kind of i kind of felt like it would be helpful too in this day and time to be able to voice, you know, just get whatever out you needed to in, in a, in a sound. Cause it doesn't matter sometimes what you say, just as long as you're getting that sound out. And then, um, and then also you can kind of start to get more familiar with your own sound, right? As you exactly. practice that. Yeah, exactly. And when you, and, and science is starting to come around to this, um, and more so because the, the science of, um, metaphysics and the science, when they started studying, um, meditation and compassion and mindfulness and stuff, it really kind of threw them into this metaphysics world. And, and so they're coming around, but what they're going to find is what Buddhism has known for a long time, which is that we're all en energy. And when you see people as energy, how you address issues is through harmonics and frequency and light. Mm -hmm. So oh, a yeah. lot of medicine in the future is going, or near future, um, is going to be very spa-like. Mm, that <laughs> so sounds love great. Spa. I love that. Yeah, you're just going to yeah. go into the spa and like, I need to tune up. I'm kind of um, feeling like I'm already doing that right now with people. It's like, let's just make it fun and enjoyable. You know? Yeah, like it's going to be. Our body is going to resonate better with that anyway, right? Oh, it's going to be great. They're going to be like, okay, yeah. so you're, according to this, because we're all, you know, we're all made of our chakras. Mm -hmm. um, we're all made of, we're all made of light. Um, you yes. can take a prism and just shoot light into it. You're going to see all this, the colors. Well, uh, it's also important to visualize light coming to your body too, right? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, making that yeah. A daily practice. Yeah. yeah. It, and and, and the, the great thing about the Buddhist Mandala's book is that it really, when you read it and you learn about yourself mm -hmm. as your mandala, um, and that reality is just a creation um, reflection of your consciousness, oh, wow. of your yeah. energy field, your energy field is your consciousness. Um, You'll, you'll really see that things are very, very malleable. Um, things, you know, you can actually heal yourself and regenerate yourselves and regenerate um, your body to be younger and age slower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't I look my age that. for a reason. And neither does my husband. So, um, yeah, your cells, um, will respond to what you are telling them or what, you know, what you're telling them most. Like if you're telling yourself you're getting old or you don't like yourself, you know, then they'll respond that way. Um, yeah. but if you tell them you love them and you're so, you know, you give them love and, and energy, the, the cells, um, you know, it's in the light, I think it's, I know it sounds really simple maybe to some people, but it's, um, I found that to be true too. And it's like, they, it's kind of like hydration. You just need that, you know, on a daily basis just to, to be, um, because I know actually I was scientifically, it does kind of back that up is they're mm -hmm. finding that, um, what's in the cells and I, I'm not going to do this justice, but it's like a more vis viscous kind of, um, uh, liquid. It's not like just water. It's a little bit more, it's got other things in it, mm -hmm. of course, that's um, not completely water-like. So they're finding out that it's maybe different than the cells are communicating in a way that's different than what we've been taught. So we're finding that out too, which is right. Really cool. Right. Yeah. And the I'm, I'm putting this in book two um, of, um, uh, Buddhist mandalas and book two goes in further into your fifth dimensional energy or your higher dimen multi-dimensional self but um you know it's the christ consciousness of a multi-dimensional 
Merkaba. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. But, you know, when you see yourself as energy, then what energy needs is um, it needs more light. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And light, you know, scientifically, and everything I say is science based. It's also Buddhist, but Buddhism is science based living. So, you know, it's the same thing. But, anyways, um, and we open everything up for to add more to the canon. So just keep on adding to the canon different ways and different modalities and different ways to create your Dharma and work with your Dharma or whatever. So, that, you know, there's no one size fits all. We know that because everybody's having their incarnation for um, their own purpose. And so they're going to go down the rabbit hole that works for them. Um, and so we know that and we respect everybody's journey. So, but um, basically because everybody is energy, the things that you say that, um, and the things to yourself, the things that you put yourself in, you know, that is feeding back to you. So mm -hmm. if you constantly put uh, negativity back into you, then you are actually shortening those telomeres in your body. Mm. Um, you're actually shortening your lifespan. You're shortening your, your cells ability to regenerate. You're actually like aging yourself prematurely and making your immune system sicker because wow. you're constantly feeding the energy of negativity, which will break up that energy pattern in your body. And they've already shown that scientifically and that's in the book as well. Um, so if you want to um, be healthier, have a better immune system, age slower, more gracefully, um, anything else like that, then, then be mindful of the things that you put in your dharma, put in your reality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, see silver linings in negative things. Mm -hmm. yes. Learn a lesson. If so, it, from it if you learn a lesson that's silver linings too don't 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 take it as oh i'm so bad i'm just gonna you know and just punish yourself see silver linings learn a lesson see how you can take that that negative situation or thought and turn it around i mean there's all these we all talk about there's a lot of different ways to do that but yeah. that's how you can work with with energy that um maybe is not positive it came to your yeah. experience for a reason because it's part of your creation process. And sure. if, and if you learn from it and you turn it around and use it to kind of jump into the next best experience, you won't create that cycle over and over again because you don't need that lesson. Yeah. So, I kind of almost think of it like as a curiosity towards mm -hmm. it instead of, you know, a criticism, instead of criticizing yourself, maybe get curious about why that's there, you know? And, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So like, um, and you know, I never, I never knew that this was just really weird and unusual, but my doctor is, you know, they, they, they take care of myself, my husband, my two children. And they say, you know, it's very rare that we get um, a whole family's um, health records and none of you are on medication. Oh yeah. It is rare. It's super like, rare. Yeah. You're none of you are on medication yeah. and none of you have a health issue. That's amazing. Yeah. They, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. I know now, what you mean. Yeah. Now I do get my neck, my neck pain and I go to the chiropractor and <laughs> I get too. a massage because you yeah. know, the, the machine will kind of age yeah. a little bit and, and so forth. You got to do that. It. It's maintenance, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Totally. You got to go in for the maintenance, but for the most part, there's no medication and there is um, no illnesses. And um, that's really unusual because even on my husband's side of the family and on my side of the family, um, there, there are members of my family who do have illnesses and they do have medication. So we're from the same, same exact stock. Yes. But yeah, the that difference is how we choose our, to live our lives. Absolutely. Your perception, right? Mm -hmm. and yeah. It, I, I highly agree. I have the same experience. Like, um, they're always, doctors are always like, you're not on any medication? No. <laughs> I, well, you know, you're a white middle-class woman. You should be on plenty of medication. I should be, right? You're At like, least anxiety. You're, like the prime, you're the prime <laughs> candidate for pharmaceuticals. They love you guys. Mm, yeah, 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 definitely. We'll buy into it very quickly. But, you know, I think um, that's, why, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm like, I'm teaching people that your body has the ability to heal itself. Really, that's what happens anyway. Medication mm -hmm. doesn't do that so much for you, but... Um, you know, uh, anyway, we could go down that road. That's a right. long, and, long and road, but yeah. exactly. And <laughs> medication, you know, is good. There's a, there's a reason. There's a purpose. If, exactly. If you're, yeah. So, 
you know, not that I'm knocking down um, modern med medicine because there's a reason for surgeries, there's a reason for yes. medication. And if you're in that boat and you, it is, it is part of your experience to help you, then yes, please seek professional advice. Mm -hmm. However, as a lifestyle, you get to choose your lifestyle. You get to choose how you take care of your body, what you feed in your body, not just food and, and, and drinks, but what you feed in terms of what kind of images you expose yourself to, what kind yeah. of um, people you expose yourself to, what kind of environments you expose yourself to, um, the type of talking and books that you expose yourself to. So that is also, remember your energy, you're feeding yourself that yeah. energy and everything has energy, whether it's food or water or the programs you watch or the video games you play or the books you play or the people you talk to. If you see it's all energy and it all has a different frequency, what type of frequency are you feeding back to yourself? Because you're right. going to experience it. Yeah. It's not just about physical. what you eat. You're so right. Yeah. It's still, it's about the entertainment you consume you know, what you watch on TV. It's about the news. A lot of people are watching news right now. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, that is is one of the biggest influences on our health right there for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and I, I always say, um, and I, I think I put it in the book as well, is that, you know, we are, we, we are programmed in our DNA to look for um, negative things mm -hmm. um, just as a protective element. Right, right. You know, and, yeah. and that's fine. Um, and just they've done studies with dogs where they would show the dogs where the toys and the food is over the, the, the line. Mm -hmm. And um, if the dog got zinged once, it muscle memory that pain and it would never go there even if oh, you wow. turn it off and you show them to turn it off and and you you have to drag physically drag them over for them to go oh okay there's good stuff on this other side but that's kind of like what we do is when somebody has a bad experience about something or they see a bad experience that somebody else do then they have that muscle memory don't do that you're going to hurt yourself and it's just a protective survival instinct that we have yeah. and, but the Catch-22 with that as well is that we are also human and we have the ability, unlike animals who can only go off muscle memory, we have the ability to have conscious thought and be conscious as well and, you know, gauge, okay, so um, this negative stuff, as much as it serves a to prevent us from hurting ourselves by seeing that stuff going that's not what we want mm -hmm. we have to also choose to know it exists if it does exist and then focus on the stuff that is going to better ourselves you know yeah where, where do you find the balance in in the entertainment factor um when people just want to entertain themselves you know how much of that should people allow themselves to do well, you know, what I found and what they found in science is people are usually attracted to what they are. Oh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if, if you're somebody who's really working on um, creating the, you know, if you are a high vibe person and you just love that good goosey goosey feeling of just, you know, always being, um, seeing positivity and creating, you know, higher, and you're looking for like, higher, higher experiences, you're going to be attracted to stuff that gives you that resonance. Because you, all you do is you're feeding yourself back the food that you love. Yeah. You're that's, binging yeah. the food that you love. So you're going to, you know, for women, they're going to, they're going to binge the chick flicks that always make them feel <laughs> kind of goosey inside. They're going to binge the, the cat and dog videos, the baby videos, all the positives. They're like, oh, that's supposed to look good. But if you're somebody who is, um, you know, just really negative onto yourself, Mm. And you see the world as this scary thing that's going, that you have to protect yourself from or protect everybody else from, and you just can't see beyond that, mm. you're going to constantly feed yourself what you are until you learn that this is not who you are. And right. so then uh. when you see that you are not this fearful, fear-mongering, paranoid, schizo person, these shows that create that that low vibe resonance in you 
will no longer resonate with you and you'd be like let's turn this off let's, what's uh what's going on what's up going on in comedy you know <laughs> or, yeah, that's all i want to watch newest, anymore yeah, yeah i just want to laugh yeah, yeah what's, <laughs> let's go look at a travel and flu, food show you know yeah you, you exactly look at both things because that's the stuff that's going to resonate with what you want to feed your psyche yeah so okay, that makes sense yeah all right so that's really what i found and that's what they found in science is that people will be attracted to what they are mm. Okay. Cool. And they, all right. Yeah. And so let's, let's get into these different dimensions, dimensional yes. awareness that's going on. Okay. I would love to do that. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we've been kind of talking about it as well. Um, but so anyways, so the thing is that, so I did all this research and I'm, I'm putting in this book and um, basically there's an old prophecy in Buddhism um, and we just didn't really, really know what was going to go down or how it was going to go down, but it was just kind of a, a belief. Mm -hmm. And so the belief is that at 2012 and many indigenous tribes, the Mayans got the, the biggest Hollywood um, yeah. glamorization of 2012 doomsday because of um, some Western religions were looking for something to fall into the doomsday prediction that they continue to try to manifest and so that fit perfectly 2012 doomsday um but um it's not the doomsday it was just a marker in a lot of indigenous tribes like the native americans um chiefs of easter islands buddhism um mayan and many many others and basically it was a marker of the end of a cycle of polarity okay it was an energy in on the earth of polarity, seeing separatism mm. in each other. And um, in Buddhism, it, 2012 is the year 2,555 in the Buddhist era calendar, which is a number, 555, of changes, oh, okay. of changing over from one to another. And the changeover is just a change in energy where we um, move from the cycle of polarity because the earth completed a 20, I think a 25 or 26 million year cycle um, around its rotation. And it right was at that time. So we've known this for thousands of years and we're supposed to do this awakening ceremony. So we did this awakening ceremony not knowing what's going on. We're like, oh, we're just gonna do it because we're supposed to. So everybody did their ceremonies, um, closed out the cycle. And then we just waited. We don't know mm -hmm. what's gonna go, go on. It's such an old thing that we had to dust out. So. So what, what ended up happening is we technically, we moved into a cycle of unity, seeing the oneness in everything, seeing the interconnectedness, um, being in um, connection to consciousness, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's a new era, it's a new cycle. Um, and basically, and that's what we did. What we didn't factor in was that what was going to happen with Earth. We didn't know how Earth was going to do this, okay? We didn't know this planet that we are part of and we are an aspect of earth just like right the um microscopic animals on your face are an aspect of you having their own little storylines um <laughs> building their own little pyramids on on their atoms um so anyways an aspect of earth so we didn't know what's gonna happen with earth but in my 20 years of scientific research with the um global consciousness project um, that was done, and I think it's still a little, still bit done right now at Princeton University. And basically, what the Global Consciousness Project um, did was they recorded the Schumann resonance of Earth, yeah. which is Earth's heartbeat. Her her natural heartbeat is seven point eight three. And I'm just going to clarify the science behind this, and I put this in my book as well. And what they did was they put these random number generators all over the world. Like at the time, it was maybe seventy or so. Mm -hmm. all over the world in different parts just to see what's going on with the earth because they're following this old folklore as well they're like well let's see what the earth does she have a harpy is she alive they wanted to understand the um mystic beliefs of these indigenous tribes so right. they got some fundings from probably some some ancient souls that incarnated and said yeah let's do this <laughs> be fun so they did that and then what they found interesting is that um Every time there was going to be a natural disaster, an earthquake, a tsunami, or even some kind of um, current affairs 
issue. Mm -hmm. The earth um, are at these random number generators would have a spike in her energy. She would go from 7.83 up to 14 or 20 or 30, or she'd just shoot up. And so, and they always found after seeing all this data from event after event after event, that it always happened hours before it happened. And the reason why is because Earth is sending out energy. Mm -hmm. um, the universe is sending out energy. The ion ionosphere is sending out energy. And the people, like animals, our energy from our hearts at 5,000 times stronger than the brain is sending out energy. And just like animals in a specific area, when the animals in area feel anxiety, all of them as a collective start running for the high hills. Mm -hmm. Right. At the same time, and indigenous cultures know this, uh, when they look at the animals and they're all running for the high hills, they're like, I don't know what's going on, but we got to go up there too. <laughs> because the animals are, they, all of a sudden, the consciousness in all the animals yeah. feel the impending event is coming. And so we do the same thing. And so when all these millions of people in different areas around these random number generators feel anxiety or feel some kind of surge of energy, it will set off these, these generators like, hey, we're going to have an earthquake. Or, hey, we're oh. going to have a tsunami. Or, hey, we're going to have 9-11. Okay, oh so goodness. even human events. Now, the, we, they don't know why the Earth responds to some human events and not other human events, <laughs> but sometimes she does respond to human events um, hours before it happens as well. So that's another area of the research. But the point is the Earth has been, and you can look at the data, the website is New Sphere, N O O S P H E R E, so New Sphere. Princeton. Edu, and you can look at 25 years of scientific evidence, event after event after event, where they measured the Earth change her frequency um, into higher hertzes, and uh -huh. so. Yeah, and so it's been scientifically proven that we are all connected and we are also connected to the earth. And the thing is, what, what was interesting, if you look at the data, is that, you know, she went from 7.83 and then she went to 14, then she went to 20. But in the last, kind of around 2012 and then afterwards, she started spiking even higher and taking huger and huger leaps, going to 60, 80, 100 sometimes. This year, she's just gone crazy. I think it's oh, because yeah. of worldwide yeah. coronavirus. <laughs> but yeah, everybody's pretty feeling intense. it. Yeah. Everybody's feeling it and sending it out to the ethers. And oh, so okay. So is it is it initiated by people or is it initiated by the earth or both? Like how, both. I'm both, both. okay, yeah. Both. So mostly it's initiated by the earth. Okay, We're responding to the biggest magnet on the planet, which is yeah. planet earth herself is the biggest magnet. Remember we're aspects on her body. Mm, right. So, um, and she, you know, it's just, just kind of like you'll respond to the, the dry scalp in your hair. Like, you know, she'll respond to you sometimes too. Right. Um, but, um, but you are we're <laughs> responding to her and she's taking these huge leaps into these higher frequencies and, it's like this, um, when, when you're looking at Hertz's, okay, and they do this in meditation research, and they found this in um, Buddhism as well. When they put like monks and nuns and, and advanced meditators on um, EEG, mm -hmm. okay, what they found is that many of these people, um, their brain waves change to gamma, and right. gamma is a very, very high brain wave. Gamma um, frequencies are 60, 80, 100. They're very, very high brain waves. And the difference is this. Um, people whose brain waves resonate in gamma are having a clearer picture quality. Okay. So oh, okay. When, they, when they do these research in meditation, they've done you know, 50 or 60 years, or I'm sorry, 40 or 50 years of research so far, and they, they get the same thing they found is that the people in the area are also affected. So this group of meditators, uh, when they're doing this, this meditation and getting into gamma wave frequency, um, the area in which they're at will have a lower crime rate, okay? Oh, wow. uh, will have lower death rates, everything else. So the greater reality is responding to those high vibe people who are radiating at gamma. 
And all they do is thinking positive thoughts about consciousness and oh, and tuning into, you know, um, consciousness, being grateful, being, yeah. grateful. being grateful will change your brain waves to gamma brain waves. So it's like when you are, um, when you are shopping for a TV. Okay, mm -hmm. when you're shopping for a TV and you go for the low quality TV, um, you're going to get pixelation. But if you shop for a, a TV with a higher um, hertz frequency, like maybe like 120 hertz or, or higher, you're going to get crisper picture quality, mm -hmm. cleaner picture quality. The frames are going to switch so much faster that you won't oh, know wow. the difference. Okay, that's really what's going on is that the earth, it's, the earth is changing her energy frequency okay she started around 2012 she started doing um actually a little bit before that she was doing it anyways but she started doing little jumps little jumps okay so you, most people didn't know the difference that's so yeah. why we didn't know what couldn't even, tell. even we couldn't yeah. tell the difference even buddhism and indigenous tribes were like oh we did the ceremonies we think we're gonna switch over but we don't know what's gonna happen so it's been fascinating to actually watch it happen in real time yeah but but what is happening is like this um when you're sailing, okay, everybody who's sailing um, knows this. When you're sailing and the wind changes, you don't notice the small little um, changes. So you're sailing in the same exact three-dimensional way, so going by yourself, da, da 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 And then all of a sudden, you get these big whooshes of energy. The wind's picked up mm. a lot, but you're still doing the same thing. And then those whooshes get higher and higher and greater and greater, and then you realize... I can't keep sailing the way that I normally have. I actually need more people to help me. I need a crew. I need to change the way that I do this so I can use the energy in the way I navigate my life much more appropriately. And then when I use that energy appropriately, um, I'm going to get to where I need to be or where I want to be much faster with less energy and less effort. Those right. couple of knots are going to take us to a completely different place. And what they found in scientific research as well is when um, Earth has her energy spikes, two things happen in history. And they looked at 80 different countries at these 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 times and what they found is there was either wars in those countries or they had a certain renaissance oh, so okay. it it happens the same exact way earth is an amplifier she's just amplifying what you are bringing up what you are so if you are a negative nancy kind of person doomsday whatever she's going to bring up more of what you are as an opportunity for you to, to transmute it to work on it to learn from it, hmm. maybe see some silver linings, and then you can create better with the tools. Or if you're already a positive person, you worked on those dense issues, you worked on those 3D traumas, you, you know, you, you were seeing reality um, in a more positive way, working with things a little bit um, and using the different tools, then what it's going to do is amplify what you are. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring up more of what you are. And because you don't have anything weighing your energy field down, it's right. going to bring it up even more. So things are going to manifest much easier, much faster for you. So for you, it's going to be heaven. For somebody <laughs> else, it's hell every day. That's yeah, that's why we can be living in two different realities, right? Yeah. 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 That's why people are like, oh, I can't stand this. It's, it's 2020 is horrible. I can't stand this. 2020 was great for me. <laughs> I have to say for me too. I mean, it's been, you know, my father passed away early Sorry. 2020. Thank you. But, um, you know, it's, it's part of life, right? I mean, we, and I was really, uh, I looked at it, I was honored to be there and watch him pass and all that. So, um, but yes, I agree. I think, I've learned so much. I've learned so many new things this year. It has been great for me too, despite, you know, everything that's gone around me. And I think that's the challenge is can you, you know, still be happy amidst all the chaos and, and maybe craziness around you, right? Can you still find that happiness within yourself? Right, right. Why does it have to come from outside of you, right? If it's coming right. from outside of you, there's a problem there, right? Exactly. So, um, you know, so our, our process into the fifth dimension is a process and it's going to happen over multiple, multiple lifetimes. 
Okay? Yeah. It's not a one-time thing, right. okay? Metamorphosis of a whole human species does not happen. Yeah. You know, a one-time thing. I've been um, told I've the, been here many, many times. Yeah. Some people <laughs> think it's going to be like a one-time <laughs> thing. I uh, know. Let me explain yeah. what the dimensions are and the awareness, okay? And you can look this in science as well. But in Buddhism, um, all the dimensions are within your consciousness. Okay, all, all right. of reality is within your consciousness. You remember your energy. From within you, you create the world. Okay, from within you, you create the universe. Okay, that's why every single teacher over time always, they, they talked about it in different ways and giving you guys different tools and everything else. But if you just sit and watch reality, you'll know it's the same exact path. Mm. At some point, you're going to realize that reality is a mirror. If you're having issues with your children, you're going to go to the store or you're going to wait in line and you're going to see other people have issue with the children, probably having the same issue. And, but you're going to see different people having that issue, resolving it in different ways. It's an opportunity oh. the universe is going to mirror back to you the things that you are working on to give you your choices so you can go oh i know i won't do that i'm gonna try that okay so it's the reality is trying to help you yeah you see there's an opportunity and yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah so that's really are, good i like that yeah, yeah so if you are being mindful if you're being a buddha and you're being awake within the matrix you're aware of the dharma you're going to see that the dharma reality is mirroring back what is inside you Mm. It's also going to mirror back your solutions, okay? Yes, yes. Um, so that, that's, that's one thing. The other thing is if you tune into that and you are being conscious of, um, of, of reality and consciousness, you, you will also um, sense and know through your own experience, that consciousness is all around you, that the Lord, God, conscious, whatever, Allah, whatever you want to call it, that energy is everywhere and all around you. And it's kind of giving you clues, like synchronicity is a fun thing, or law of attraction, or whatever, yeah. whatever terms you want to use for, for, for this. But there is a divine consciousness everywhere, and it's constantly going to feed you the next thing that is in your path. So if you're in the space of consciousness and you're working on something, if you're doing the work and um, you are using the tools appropriately, the, the tools of the fifth dimension that, that's coming in further and further in bucket loads, um, people are going to call you right when you think of it. Um, you're going to get an email with the solution right when you're there. Um, when you think about it, you're not going to have to try very hard. You're going to get a, you're going to go to the store and you're going to read something that answers your exact question. I mean, it's almost seamless mm. how every single step of the way is going to be fed to you because reality, the divine consciousness is like, Oh, you're ready for the next one. Some people call this your angels oh, coming right. in and, and there's a lot of different ways that we, that we, yeah. that, we that we do this. Um, your guardians are watching over whatever, but, it's all the same thing, but this divine energy, when you are ready for something, it will feed you the next thing, okay? And so you'll have a seamless experience. You will not have to struggle so hard because the abundance will just kind of flow in. And that's when you know there is a divine consciousness in all of this. Yeah. I've just been in my own way. Right, right. So really clearing a lot of that, um, a lot of our shadows, a lot of our trauma and those kinds of things, um, triggers, um, is going to be super helpful because like you said, the earth amplifies that. What which you is, are. Yeah. So that's, you know, and it's interesting you say that because, um, and I read that in your book actually too, and I thought about um, some of the areas in the United States where there's more of a vortex of energy, a, a more intense vortex. And you see some people go crazy actually in those areas. And I was always wondered like, why is that, why is that the case? Why are there, you know, why, why does it, it tend to attract people and then they go crazy? 
And then that, I don't know, that, that just they're not resonating with too that much. energy. It's too yeah. much. See, so, so let me, let me do a, a breakdown of third dimension, fourth dimension, or fifth dimension, according okay. to Buddhism. Okay. Because it's all, it's all going on in your consciousness. Okay. Remember, reality, don't ever forget that you're a soul having a human experience. That book has proven right. that thousands of times with the science. But you're still having a human experience in your energy. This is, you are a mandala, walking, talking, experiencing the Dharma. You are a fractal expression of consciousness of the Lord. You're the Lord, Allison. I'm the Lord. Everything is the Lord. Everything is the holographic matrix that is creating so that the, the Lord can have its physical experience through right. you and learn and grow and appreciate itself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so how do you want to, <laughs> how do you want to be? So anyways, so hmm. they've already proven this in science and I'm, I'm putting in my book too, but you can look this up right now for anybody who wants to geek out on the science behind this. Um, our brains can access up to 11 dimensions so far. Wow. 11 dimensions. It's all happening in our brain. It's happening in our consciousness. And our brain is just a physical expression of consciousness. Consciousness, the energy field of the divine. Okay, it's in everybody. So our energy field can access up to 11 dimensions or greater. And basically, um, the third dimension is just a construction of forms, you know, Construction of forms. That's all yeah. the third dimension is. Okay. Construction, basic construction of forms so that you can have your experience. The fourth dimension, and the, I'm just going to simplify this. Um, the fourth dimension is just that time exists in relation to each other. So remember, this is all going on in your head, mm -hmm. in your consciousness. So if you are fourth dimensional and humans are really good at this, we see time exists in relation to each other. Your past creates your present. Your present creates your future. We see the linear growth of things. It's a way we measure time so that we can see things happening and so we can watch it grow and expand. Right. All right. We create an artificial concept of time. Okay. That's fourth dimensional okay. awareness. Okay. It's going on in your head. Okay. It's how you see reality in the Dharma. Third dimensional awareness is this is this, this is this, this is just all around us. Fourth dimensional awareness is being aware that things are happening in linear progression so that you can see the flow of it. Now, if you get into the fifth dimensional awareness, and this is where some people are experiencing some, some of this fifth dimensional awareness. Um, they're, they're living in the fifth dimension. I live in the fifth dimension all the time. Um, and it's, it can all exist because it's existing in your head and in your consciousness, you create reality. Okay, mm -hmm. so some people walking around thinking it's the third dimension. And remember, Earth is going to amplify what you are. So it's going to give you more of the third dimensional push-pull. Right, right. Because yeah. that's what you think you are, and that's what you think you're experiencing. So you're going to get what you are because that's where your consciousness is at. And that is yeah. the lesson and the experience that is for you because you're not ready to go to fifth dimensional awareness because if you're ready to go to fifth dimensional awareness, um, everything exists right now. That's why Buddhists always say, focus on the present. The present is a gift. It's a present. It's a yeah. gift. The yes. present is a gift. Um, there's the power of now is really good at that. There's so many different ways in which you can focus on the present. The present life is the most important right now is the most important so and the reason why right now is most important and why this is a fifth dimensional awareness is because um consciousness is expanding it's called yeah. always expanding the lord is always expanding and because it's always expanding um in buddhism there's no we know that there's no time and space and we've done lots of meditation research through the eons about this all of it is this at the same time. So um, all the dimensions, all the universes, all everything is happening. Your past, your present, your future is happening at the same exact time. And if you see that everything is, is, is happening at the same exact time, what you can do is you can, if you're working on, I've had clients that do hypnosis through QHHT, um, quantum healing hypnosis um, that was developed by the former author Dolores Cannon. And, and that is another modality 
that I found um, in my research for Buddhist Mandala's book two, uh-huh. that is fifth dimensional. So right. fifth dimensional awareness is everything is this now. And so when you, um, and there's a lot of ways to do this, um, but if you are, let's say you have issue with a childhood trauma, okay? Mm-hmm. And that childhood trauma, you got to the point right now where you're like, okay, I'm ready to look at this and let go of the anger I have about it. Learn, see the silver linings, use it to propel me into an experience, whatever, how, whatever your way of dealing with that dense issue that's been holding you down, you transmute it and you move on with your life. Well, what happens is because you're living in the present moment and you're living in this fifth dimensional awareness, your past is going to change. Oh. And then all of a sudden, your family members, and I've had clients come in for hypnosis because this is happening to them, their family members have completely different history than they physically experience. Oh, wow. Because they change their perspective on reality so much, and they address the repressed issues so much in their life that it no longer has an effect on them. So they're no longer holding on to that old perspective of what happened in the past. They've mm-hmm. transmuted it. And because they transmuted it, they changed their energy field so much that a different past was created to match up to their present. Wow, that's amazing. Hence, yeah. Hence Mandela effects. All oh, right. It sounds very similar to um to uh family constellations therapy as well right yeah yeah Yeah. there's so many different ways in which to to see this um and there's a lot of people that talk about this and it's not anything new we have we have been able to do this for a very long time but people don't many people don't want to let go of the of the issues because they use it um you know for their own personal um traumas and dramas and you know but if you can get to the point where you stop punishing yourself for having that yeah. experience, and sometimes hypnosis is good as well because you can see the underlying, like why did that happen in your life, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that it can help you kind of transmute that energy. What I've, what I've, what I've had in hypnosis as well, and, and this goes back to another way to prove in this point that everything exists now, is that I'll have clients come in. I used to have an issue with my sister. I let go of that issue with my sister. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, my same sister, who I was physically there with her when she broke her right leg, all of a sudden that injury is on the left leg Mm. and not the right leg. And everybody in the family is like, oh, it's always happened in the left leg. But I was there and I know that. And then somebody else was there and they know that. So they had somebody else that corroborated the same exact history. But many of the people in the family have a different recall because it's on the left leg. But I will see this with my clients all the time because um, obviously I talk, I talk about parallel realities and your consciousness. Um, and they will come in trying to understand why did my history change? Mm. What did I do to change my history so much that um, family members have completely hif- different recall of the experiences that, I, that were so pivotal in their um, childhood? Um, you know, so this is, and, and, and this is what's happening is more and more people are coming, their, their, their energy is getting picked up by earth because she's an amplifier. She's helping right. everybody anyway. She's bringing up what you are. And so, because they don't want their lives to be how every single day they're working on those issues, they're, really, they're letting go of those, those dense um, issues. And so they're raising the energy field and as the energy field comes up, um, they're, they're, creating reality from that higher abundant energy field and so what happens is that sometimes the history does change okay that's being fifth dimensional awareness so it's like that what jumping from parallel realities is kind of what you were talking about uh, yeah you can navigate you can navigate to different realities i've been to realities where we have different presidents right Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. This last election, it could have been either. Who knows? You know, but well, it was I, so I, close. Yeah. I've, I've been, <laughs> I've been to real, I like, I've been to reality where Hillary, um, oh, really? Won with Bernie Sanders as vice president. What was that like? Pretty good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then also, I woke up <sighs> one day and we got this one. 
this last one. So I was oh. like, oh God, we got Trump. All right, whatever. So that took a, <laughs> that took a while to adjust. I'm like, obviously I'm here for a reason. So right, whatever. right. I'm just navigating. And then, and then, you know, so it. But that happened change. in a different reality too. That happened in a different saying. reality. And huh. we, yeah. And this, I go into this for book two is that um, Samsara, which is the game of creation, the, mm-hmm. the, the creation that consciousness comes out through consciousness, everything in consciousness has a polarity. Every, this is separate from the 3D polarity uh, um, from the change over 2012, but everything has an up or down right or left all oh, right okay yeah okay yeah. light or dark in order for one to exist the other has to exist in order to mirror back to it itself okay right. it's a very basic concept and you cannot get away with it in creation all right it needs everything needs a mirror otherwise it wouldn't know itself oh that makes sense yeah okay you wouldn't yeah. know that you exist if i'm not looking at you Right, right. There's no point of reference there. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. So it's a basic concept in um, Buddhism. Everything exists out of opposites. Mm. It has to be. So um, there could be a lot of good des- decisions, and there's going to be one bad decision just to mirror that they're good decisions. <laughs> yeah. Know. So now, now that's why everybody's happy because it feels really good to know that we made the right decision. There had to be one bad in order for you to yeah. know you're even in the good decision. Right. Okay. Oh, so yeah. stop punishing the bad decisions in your yes. life. Yes. Yes. Because they are there as a frame of reference so you know how to make the good decision. So, you, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can go into this, but basically everything in creation has opposites. And even when it comes to creating universes from within your consciousness, there are people who are going to experience the Dharma as one reality. And then there's going to be people like myself who are going to experience the Dharma as navigating between multiple different realities because they're going to have clients that come in with their personal Mandela effects, trying to make sense for, I, I was doing all this spiritual work and transmuting everything. And now all of a sudden my history's changed. My neighbor's house is a different color. The neighbor's <laughs> Wait, dog a is a different color too. You know, what's going on? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I know. I had this feeling lately with, there's so many, I had a feeling of different direct, you know, many different options here. Like this, I couldn't, I couldn't really explain it other than that. Just like there's, it just, I just was, especially around the election, I was like, there's, there's a lot of things that just opened up so we can just kind of pick where we want to go here. Yeah. Yeah. So whether you're, so, and, and again, like, you know, like no, good Buddhist is going to tell you one way is better than the other because everybody's creating differently. Yeah, everybody's right. going down the rabbit hole a little differently. Sure. And um, otherwise there will be no point in us being fractal expressions of source. If we are all alike and creating alike, That's we true. need that. We need kind of that, that mirroring effect. Okay. So that we can pick and choose and then navigate through. So I navigate through different realities and some people might just only just do one and that's fine yeah. there's spiritual people who just do one reality because they've never had that experience of things changing in the reality and that is their experience that was their experience for how they are going to experience their dharma mm-hmm. um so they're never going to have those mandela effects they you know they're never going to have any of those changes in in their history or anything else but there are people who experience the multiple aspect of it mm. and so there isn't very much material um right now in helping people navigate the multiple aspect of it there's there are books right now um that has come out and there's more that's coming out and i provide my perspective comes from buddhism and because we've gotten so much into the science of it to see how much of it is can be clarified and how much of it is actually currently right, right on point um i bring that into it to just as further evidence to kind of help us make sense of how we navigate society right yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Because then you don't demonize mistakes or things you don't agree yeah. with, you know, it's yes. just part of, yeah, different realities. It's yeah. just different realities and it's different choices. And so, um, I mean, even with the, you know, I mean, I, everybody, I voted for whoever I wanted to vote for. People are going to vote for their own reasons and they have their own reasons and everybody's right in the reasons that they had it. Right. However, we're all playing in the same sandbox because it's more fun <laughs> to play in the same sandbox than it is to play by yourself in your own universe. 
Um, that's why it is a collective consciousness. And so for people who are fifth dimensional, um, who are tuning into the higher energies and working with the fifth dimensional energies, these higher spikes that earth is bringing in these higher energies, we've already worked on our, our issues. And if all issues come up then we transmute it, work on them. And there's so many different tools in re- different oh, yeah. religions, in yoga, meditation, just it runs the gamut. There's so many different tools that you can use to kind of help you in your dharma and how you create reality and experience the reality. So no, there's no one that's better or worse. It just depends on what are you working on? Right. What is your current reality? And what are the things that you're working on? So the modality that resonates with you is going to be the, the tool that you take out your tool belt to mm-hmm. work on at the time. Yeah. And it might not work in every single situation that you experience, but it might work in some. So, you know, be open. Right. So, um, yeah, people who are really good at manifesting, um, you know, within the Dharma are really, really open to, well, how do you do it? Oh, that's interesting. Well, try some of that. You know, so I try a lot of different things for and fun too. too. I like to do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's like just changing <laughs> Makes life more clothes. interesting. Yeah, Totally. Totally. It is, it is, because they're all just creations from consciousness is giving us so many different ways in which we can use, so it can, we can create whatever we want, so we can go, oh, that's, that's interesting, that's, I like that one. <laughs> so anyways, the fifth dimension of awareness, for people who are in the fifth dimension of space, they are going to see reality as more fluid, they're literally going to be changing their histories, wow. okay? So is that um, what's going on with people, with the younger generations are trying to kind of do that in a way? I, I'm getting yeah. that feeling, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. A lot of this stuff is, a, a lot of the younger generation, um, and I found this in different um, spiritual people that I spoke, speaking to in their modality that they're teaching as well, but um, a good amount of the, of the younger generation are high vibe already. They're already coming in, into um, reality of a high frequency, and they are kind of like, we're just tr- changing our energy. They already came in with a new, the new blueprint. Okay. Right. And, um, and so, you know, just like metamorphosis, it's kind of like, like if you're going to talk to a, um, a butterfly before it cocoon and came out, it's going to be scary. And there's going to be a lot of, you know, yeah. um, internal, you know, struggles it's going to have because it doesn't know what's going to happen. And so it's a little bit growing pains, but um, you can navigate those growing pains very peacefully um and so and we are in the process of being a butterfly we're going to metamorphosize and get into um a fifth dimensional a further into the fifth dimensional reality of unity consciousness where we are a um interstellar galactic society Mm, okay (laughs) so um the way in which you do that is you have to be fifth dimensional Mm. In, in your mind Remember, we can access up to 11 dimensions in your consciousness. Um, you have to be fifth dimensional awareness. And not everybody's going to be fifth dimensional awareness. And that's fine because everybody's in their own journey. They're having their experience. And so somebody who's 3D, who's manifesting reality from their worst fears, is not going to want to be in the fifth dimensional higher frequency where everything manifests faster. All right. Yeah. Easily. Because then their worst <laughs> nightmares are going to happen all the time. Oh, gosh. That's true. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be yeah. manifesting a car accident in every car that they get into. They're going to uh. stop and toe every time they, they walk. They're going to, they're, you know, it's not fun. No. <laughs> so because they haven't worked on um, their repressed, they haven't worked on healing the issues. They haven't worked on creating reality with a higher vibe mindset they're not knowing how to use the tools so they're 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 working on like it's like the early analogy of the sailboat they're trying to sail with in these higher energies in a third dimensional way and they're just going round and round in a circle never leaving the harbor right pissed off and frustrated and cursing all the time that's what some people are doing they're not ready for this fifth dimensional awareness and that's fine it's part of the process for them Yes. But um, if they work on it, the material and the is here right now for you to work on it. But some people are ready to work on on creating from a fifth dimensional frequency. And if they know how to use the new tools that have been around since 2012 and coming further in buckets, 
<laughs> um, it, things are going to manifest much faster, much smoother, seamless. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's yeah. lots of different ways that you can, you can create abundance in your life in these higher energies. Um, the other thing in these higher energies is because everything's existing now, you are going to have some fifth dimensional um, awareness of different dimensions. You're going to maybe see uh -huh. ghosts. <laughs> So if you're like a ghost hunter, you're gonna have a great time. You know, you know those ghost hunter shows. They need to get somebody who's five. Yeah. Oh right. Why don't they do that? <laughs> because they're three D. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna get someone. They, they're three D. I always I used to watch it. That was funny because they they'll get somebody and they're like, you know, looking at things in three D terms of yeah. oh, this or that, this or that. But if they get somebody who's five D. Those ghosts will reveal themselves in the pictures much easier. They will communicate with oh, them. Yeah, like, I would imagine so, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if if those entities in the different dimension, because they're five D, they can they can see it, they can experience it more, or they, or they're um, more tuned into it. They can see them. They can and the, the ghosts can see them, and they can see the ghosts, so they can experience the ghosts. They can actually have a conversation. And if they are struggling to get to the other side, they can actually walk them to the other side. Wow. They can actually be like, okay, well, let me talk to you, to you about consciousness. Stop punishing yourself like you didn't while you were alive. Because they're kind of stuck. They're yeah, kind they're of stuck. kind of stuck. They're kind of yeah. stuck at the level of consciousness that they were at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can actually, you can actually oh help them God. out. That's true. Yeah. I, I did that with my dad. I, I mean, he went, <laughs> I had to do some things to help him, you know, keep, go to the, go to where he wanted to go, I should say. But, Not so much fun. Yeah. It would basically end a lot of those ghost um, hunter um, shows. <laughs> yeah, right. They just want some, uh, what am I, what the word I'm looking for, like some kind of ending to, or some, um, for some reason I can't think of the word, but. <laughs> they love the so, freak show. They love the freak show. Yeah. They love the but freak I show. think like spirits, they really do want to keep, they, I just think they want to know that everything's like, well, with my dad, I think he just wanted to know that everything was taken care of. Like we were taken care yeah. of, you know, and I, and I had to do some things to help him let go and move on, you know, mm -hmm. so he could, and he was asking me to do that. So I did it and it was great. <laughs> and he moved on and he moved yeah. forward and, and, you know, cause you're going to, you're going to, you can end it wherever you are in your awareness. And even like yeah. people, like, because I did some studies for NDEs, near death experiences, for um, my book three, Buddhist Mandalas. And my son gonna... has had a near death experience. Oh, what was his? He actually fell off a cliff and we were hiking. Oh. Yeah. And he, he was, are you okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. I just like, <laughs> yeah, hang now. <laughs> oh, gosh. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> you like <laughs> poke myself like, oh no hang me all right <laughs> uh i'm yeah. a person <laughs> yeah right <laughs> I'm, I'm i got a body um I got a body. Right. <laughs> no but he uh it was he was 10 and he uh it's he fell off a cliff and he i think he was gone for a little bit and he came back so um yeah it was a ter it was a very yeah i mean it was like very traumatic obviously uh it just was a kind of a surreal experience. I don't, you know, I was just so grateful that he lived because it was one of those things, you know, Vaughn, where I, uh, it, it was like, there was, it was like two realities. It felt like two realities split off at that moment. You know, there was a reality where he died and there was a reality where he lived, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so it was really, I don't mean to get so oh, no, down, no, no. but, um, but yeah, it just, it just, all this is making me actually think about that now because, um, I just remember thinking I wanted, I, I decided there the reality I wanted to, to happen for that moment. And, and he was alive and he clearly, I, there's no way he could have survived that fall. Right. You know, it, it was right. a 60 foot drop. Yeah. And yeah. he did. Yeah. If you're in so. these higher awarenesses, and, and again, some, some things are going to happen because that's in their person's life plan. Right. Okay. Right. This, is, this, is whole, this is whole concept in Buddhism on the factors of reincarnation. But anyway, some things are going to happen. And this is the, the thing that's really, really hard for people to understand, especially in the West, is why bad things happen. Okay. Yeah. And how, why would somebody plan that in their life? And I, you know, I actually had a cancer 
pa um, patient came in for a hypnosis and a client and she asked about that. And I said, you know, let me ask you this. Susan G. Komen Foundation for Breast Cancer Awareness had her sister gotten healed um, from her cancer, Susan G. Coma would have never started or had the fire to start her foundation and help millions and millions of women across the world. Right, right. Yeah. So we don't know why seemingly bad things happen to people. Okay. We don't know why the breakups happen to people or the way that they lose their health, so et cetera, et cetera. We don't know why these things happen. But as we're living through it, if we can see the silver lining, if we can find the lesson, mm -hmm. if we can use it to better ourselves, that's what we could do while we're living through it. And then later on, when you look back, you see how it played in your life and how it factored into your creation process. Okay. Yeah. Very controversial because some people don't like anything bad to ever happen in your life. Right. Right. Nothing bad. You just sit here and <laughs> eat bonbons and everything's good. Right. But then here's the thing. Then you wouldn't be in creation because creation requires opposites. That's true. Yeah. And you I know it changed know. his life for the, he changed as a person after that. I mean, he was totally different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a good it, way. Yeah. He he became he was he was like a rock that became a diamond out of a tough time. Oh, it's the very pressure, true. The pressure. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's so many different ways in which you can see these these things um in your life and how you can look at them and how you can use them. And you can use them to focus on on making your you know, seeing yourself as a victim and seeing it as, well, you can never get ahead, all that, these other kind of things. And that's going to inspire into another um, outcome that, because that's what you're focusing on. So you right. are a fractal expression of consciousness. So you're going to create and put the energy on what you focus on. And the energy and intentions that you put yourself on is going to turn into your actions and it's going to solidify into a real experience. Yeah, Ooh, and I think really that's experience. yeah. I think that's the most important and very practical thing that when we talk about tools for the fifth dimension, I think that's huge. I mean, is there anything else um, practically that people can, if they really want to get out of like their third or fourth dimensional reality and step into the fifth, Vaughn? What do you what do you recommend? Yeah. Where do they start to? First, what you want to do is you want to, if you know you have repressed issues that you have that still piss you off, mm -hmm. that is holding down your energy field. Your mandala is not, um, yeah. is not as high as it should be because you already came out, came into this world with a certain frequency and probably pretty high. And as you got into this world, things happen and, and you know, um, some people have had some really tough situations happen in their life and they have held that in their psyche that is, they've held that in their aura and they've never really addressed it. So they get, they get reborn into another lifetime holding that pent up energy in their aura field in the next lifetime. So they're going to manifest the same pain in the All neck right. from where they were shot in a different lifetime they never let that go it's going to turn up you know some people they, yeah. they cause the same the same um issues in their body over and over and they break the same leg in different ways they're like why is it always doing this <laughs> it's because there is some is your body is telling you that there is something in your energy field that you haven't let go whether it's something in this lifetime or in another lifetime mm. so um and there's a lot of different modalities. I do quantum healing hypnosis technique and I'm in the Seattle area. So if you're in the Seattle area, you could reach out to me through my website, MerkabaChakras.com or not you just go to QHHTOfficial.com. You can find a practitioner, practitioner in your area. There are other modalities as well. Whatever modality works for you to help you kind of address your what I call your abundance blocks the things mm. that's blocking your abundance that's lowering your frequency so if you address those issues um, that you have not wanted to look at for a long time and you address them and you find a way to transmute them they no longer hold down your energy field okay right. so that's first let's clean out the garbage 
Okay, clean yeah. the garbage out. And reality is going to help you. It's going to bring it up in mirrors. Okay, it's, it's going to help yeah. you. If it, you you you're, you're going you want to become spiritual and create higher reality, you know, with consciousness, it's going to bring up the stuff. So it's going to be kind yeah. of messy. But that's, yeah, that's, and that's a part of the practice, right? And then that's a part of and, it's spring cleaning, baby. Yeah. So it's going to be your reflection messy. of what you give to your I mean like what the amount of love you give to yourself is also reflected back, right? Or you know, exactly. how you prioritize yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So clean out the the gunk and then the other thing is um once you clean out the gunk and is if more gunk comes up then work on that and um sometimes it could be your belief system about money mm, right. um that that comes up for you to transmit um excuse me get the charger here um you might have a belief system about relationships um that no longer serve you in these higher energies if you want to be a creator of your reality with these higher energies you're going to have to work on these things because these are what i call conditioning mm -hmm. you've been conditioned through society tv your belief system whatever external factors that you were born and grew up into right. these have factored into the way you see the dharma say the way you see reality and so you're creating from these unconscious um perspectives on things so some people may be wanting to attract a high vibe um love but they right. keep but they have a unconscious belief that may be uh, manifesting in people that have certain issues that sh that continue to reinforce that belief system yeah um so there's a lot of different things and it's going to come up for you to transmit and once you transmit them and you work on them then learn from it and then create um with the new tools yeah. so the, the tools are to be um aware of reality as it's being served up to you uh -huh. work with synchronicity as it's being served up to you okay because remember it, it you are reality. Reality is you. So work with, it's going to help you. And so There's that's something what, delightful about paying attention to synchronicities. Oh, yeah. Isn't, yeah. It yeah, makes it's, life so nice. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, so those are the, the new tools. Um, and then just be open. I, I actually have a podcast that, I, that you can see on my YouTube channel. And I show a lot of different ways that, that different people teach different modalities to help address um, these dense issues or help address the, the perspective they have about the dharma um, mm -hmm. and learn how to create better with okay. these higher energies so these are the tools that are available to you the thing about uh, manifesting and creating your dharma within these higher fifth dimensional energy um, is that as you become more um as you become a higher mandala a higher energy field um, your spiritual sixth senses will also activate okay okay yeah. and in buddhism um in buddhism we, you know we, we when we if somebody gets to that part you know it can kind of spook you a little bit yeah all yeah. right it can kind of <laughs> spook you a lot and so and for some people they're like oh, i got my third eye and you know it's really scaring me reality is scaring me so they want to kind of go back and it's kind of like <laughs> uh once you open that door you're gonna have to keep you can't really go back because now you know too much yeah but, right but it, as your six senses kind of come online and you start tuning into reality, you're going to have to learn a different way to exist. Mm. I oftentimes kind of go with the flow because sometimes like when I do interviews, I'll just pull an example out of the air and it will be exactly what they're working with in their life. That person that's interviewed me. So I'm like, oh, okay. I'll work <laughs> with it. I'll just kind of go along with it, you know? Um, and so if you're in this higher energies, you're, you know, you're going to naturally remember you're living in the present. You're going to tune into the field much more. You're going to know things about people and things that you didn't want to know. So you're going to have to learn a new way to yeah. be respectful mm -hmm. of everybody's personal space and their personal energy space because everybody's history is in their energy field. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to have to learn. Um, you're going to have, there's a whole new etiquette that you're going to have to learn um, when you're fifth dimensional awareness. Okay. Um, if somebody, you're going to come across somebody and you're just going to know exactly what, what the issues are. And it might not be 
um, good for you to just tell them how it is because it might set them off. So you have yeah. to be wise. You have to be wise in how you conduct yourself. Be mindful in how you conduct yourself because you are cut. As you get further into the fifth dimensional awareness and you are basically walking around gamma brainwave, <laughs> all right, <laughs> um, reality is going to be so much more interesting to you. And so you're going to have to be mindful that everybody's in that space. Right. And you have to yeah. kind of gauge a little bit. Um, and so this is where wisdom the wisdom mm-hmm. of the masters, the wisdom of the teachers really, really can help you with your fifth dimensional etiquette. Cool. I like that. Right. Yeah. So connecting with them. Connect. Yeah. So lots of the, you know, Oshi and other people, I mean, Rumi, I mean, there's lots in the past, in the present, there's a lots of teachers, um, Wayne Dyer is a really good one. He's, yeah. you know, I mean, just a lot. I mean, you can just go down anything, anybody that resonates with you. But this wisdom, you're going to have to be, um, you know, have, you're going to kind of live through wisdom. Because when you, when you, when you are in the fifth dimensional awareness and things are manifesting faster and easier, um, and you're kind of tuning into consciousness faster and easier and tuning into everybody else faster and easier. Um, Things are going to pop into your experience. Um, you know, just weird things are going to start happening. I mean, just kind of like I said about the ghost thing, you have to be mindful of everybody else because not everybody else is there with you quite yet. There are plenty of people who are, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, you really are kind of like a walking around. <laughs> um, like a receiver, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I am. Um, I, I was in Laos, the last trip I was in Laos with my mother and my brother to visit a, a monastery that we help uh, fund art of. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was staying at my uncle's house and in the middle of the night, and I just woke up with these two talking, Kathy, chatty, chatty, talking so loud, like on a blowhorn. Um, and they were speaking in Laos. And I, um, I can understand Laos, but I don't, I don't, I'm not proficient so they're speaking in it and I'm just kind of like who is talking so I walk around the whole house trying to find these these old ladies you know gabbing up about the tourists that are staying in the house and there's nobody there so oh and I gosh. and I walk over and I know I, I go and I find exactly where they are in the house and I'm sitting here and I'm hearing that and I'm like okay I am tuning in to the ghosts that's living in this house and so I started talking to them and they're like, one of them is like, oh, nobody can hear us. Nobody ever hears us. And I'm like, yes, I do. They're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can hear you. I've been hearing you the whole time. I cannot sleep. So you can you guys please um, be respectful of the living? <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, oh my God. And they completely be quiet. Oh, wow. And I found out that they were, they were women that used to live on this house before the current tenants. They're still oh here. Goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But nobody ever sees them. Nobody ever hears them. But I mm. heard them. I couldn't see them, but I heard them and I was having communication with them. I said, they're like, somebody actually? Somebody heard us. <laughs> somebody heard us? You know, they're like surprised. But mm, we're yeah, that's these great. fifth dimensional people who are getting more into learning how to use the 5D tools that Earth is bringing up higher and higher. These are some of the weird things that's going to happen. Yeah. Now, and that's what they talk about the veil being lifted. Or, yeah, yeah. 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 You're going to spook the ghosts. <laughs> okay. Because they're not used to people seeing and hearing them, right? Is that what Yeah. They're used to yeah. three dimensional people who think more kind of like in polar terms. You're over there. I'm over here. We don't really mm-hmm. in a mingle. But these 5D people who are tuning into it the, and they're raising their energy field are going to start having these kind of weird things. And um, you're going to freak out the other dimensions. <laughs> but that's okay, because sometimes the other dimensions will start talking to you. Um, and, and some people in this space will have conversations with their deceased family members on different things. They'll have conversations with their teachers on different things. And that's also something for you to choose as well. Do you want oh, another nice. person chiming in your... In, you know, or are you going to make your own decision? Like some people want their teachers to be chiming in on everything. So they never really, and that's perfectly fine. That's your journey. Mm -hmm. Um, I prefer 
insights or guidance come through synchronicity so that I can at least choose. Yeah, that's great. And, and not have yeah. it be interfered with my consciousness. I like to have my own, um, you know, experience. So you start to trust your own your yeah, own guidance, so like, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's different. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that. Um, and, and, you know, it's, present that but some people will have that so you got to choose like okay how do you want to experience this fifth dimensional energy mm -hmm. in your reality because you're going to start getting that um kind of like telepathic communication wow okay yeah. so it now you everything that you worked on in the spiritual sense trying to earn and internalize that wisdom is going to come into play through your dharma and your experience because oh, wow. as you live in these higher energies and is and and you manifest and create within this higher um fifth dimensional awareness in your consciousness these are the weird things that is completely uncharted territory that you're going to have to navigate and yeah. um that's where wonder if people need to train in that they do something. yeah that's that's where <laughs> meditation compassion all that yeah. you know there's a lot of different things out there but the wisdom teachings oh, of right. the indigenous is really going to come into play because this is an experiential reality hmm. so you don't have to necessarily take drugs to have these experiences anymore is <laughs> what you're saying yeah no. that's a, uh, yeah you're gonna um, start you're gonna yeah. start seeing reality warp in and out right in front of your eyes you're gonna that's, start seeing energy that's incredible yeah. You're going to start seeing flashes of red light because, you know, you, you, I've heard a lot of, this, of, of these different things and you may, and everybody has a different sixth sense. So as you amplify your energy field, reality is going mm. to be more um, fluid and it's, um, it's actually a lot more fun. So a lot more fun, fun. You said, yeah, well, that's, I'm all for fun. that. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot more fun. interesting. Yeah. Cause reality is to me a lot more interesting than anything I ever watched. So it's, yeah. it's the biggest conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> well, it's the biggest conspiracy because you're the one that's conspiring against yourself. <laughs> oh, I know. Right. It's just you that when you think it's about you. that, you're like, oh my God, what have I been doing this whole time? What else? Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've been, yeah, you're not, you haven't been really, but now you're, you're awakening further into reality yeah. and, um, you know, you're, you're the ones who, so yeah, it's so it's, basically if we want to create a better reality, we just have to start with ourself, our perception is what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I love yeah. that. Start with your perception and then, you know, things will manifest and you'll work with it as you go along and stuff. And so, and you know, the thing is that, um, the new energy is not 3D, like you have to make a certain amount of money, you gotta, you know, make it a certain status, you gotta like have a certain type of person that's gonna amplify your status. It's not around survival. Oh, interesting. And, yeah. Yeah. And the fifth dimension is very highly abundant and we don't work that hard. Um, but we do a lot of things that we're passionate about and that we enjoy and just reality is much more fun. And the reason why is because um, like in the third dimension, everything is about survival for the most part. The person you marry, is that person going to be able to support you and the family? Right, <laughs> Are right. they good enough? <laughs> Did they get enough the school that you go to? Is that school going to help you get a job so you can support yourself and your yeah. family um you know what vacation do you want to go to is that vacation um have good you know stuff that is going to reflect back to me my success in life you yeah, know right, you know right. this, yeah. this, this, this different this different things this even it's not like the, keeping up with the Joneses anymore and, and no more I, like hard, like working hard to get, you know, it's, it sounds like what you're saying is what I see, like my kids, my, my son is 19 and my other son is now turning 16 to, I mean, 17 tomorrow. And it's like their generation seems to be more on that path. Like I yeah. was at first I was like, huh, what's going on here? And, but that don't actually work. makes sense. I know. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what's going yeah why don't they want to work you know but they don't they want to work they want to work they want to have fun that is true and yeah they the want to have fun. quality of life yeah quality of life they want work life balance yeah 
Yes. And we're making that transition. And so I always talk to like, especially like the young adults um, that go come into my stuff and they're like, well, you know, obviously we, we need money. We're still going to need money because, you know, you need the, some kind of trade system, whatever. Uh -huh. But in the highly abundant present, um, in the highly abundant present, there's many ways to do it. So I'll give you an example. I had somebody who's like, I really want a beach house, but I have to, you know, get a better job, make so much money, right. um, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, well, why don't you open yourself up to different ways in which you can get that beach house um, and just have fun in your job. Um, find a way to look at your the current job as just kind of a, a stepping stone and then do other passion projects and open yourself up. And so she started doing that and she found out that, you know, some one of her friends actually has a beach house with a boat that nobody ever uses because everybody's busy working and they're paying for this house that nobody ever uses. That's the best so, kind. <laughs> yeah. And so she's like, oh, well, let me, I can, you know, they, they worked out some kind of um, deal. So now she goes over there anytime she wants to, enjoys oh, their beach nice. house, yeah. enjoys the boats. And the funny thing is the, the lady next door, the old lady next door, she also helps her with the groceries and kind of watches over her, make sure she doesn't fall oh. herself. So it actually helps. That's in, great. In a simple way, she helped her friends um, take care of their plans and just kind of, you know, it's kind of a win-win. Win. It's a win-win for them. It's a win-win for her because she got exactly what she wants without having to work harder. Yeah. Or um, in 3D terms, uh, make more money or whatever. And also she helped the lady next door who needed somebody to kind of check in, to check in on her. So everybody wins. Yeah. It's a highly abundant universe. But when you oh, see that there's so that. many different ways in which you can have the same experience. Yeah. You can see that you are manifesting easier, not working harder, and more people are going to win. That's fifth dimensional creation. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, it's like, it's nice to have everybody winning, you know, and everybody abundant. I, I, you know, it's, it's, and that's totally possible. Yeah. You know? And this, yeah. and, and our, everything is going to, um, and I talk, when I talk to young people and I tell them, you know, the same thing. I say, you know, just find a area that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you find an area that you're interested in, it's going to morph and change, obviously, but there's lots and lots of different ways in which you could be abundant in that area. So, um, and just be open to it. And so, you know, a lot of them are get they would, I get a lot of farmers from my hypnosis, a lot of them are farmers, or they're coming <laughs> in, or they're like, they, they, they love yoga and they want to do a yoga meditation oh, yeah. retreat, or, or they, uh, or they just want to cook all day, but, you know, they're open to being a they're open to cannabis and edibles and, and, you know, creating that. So uh, there's, there's so many different stories in which you can do that. I actually had a client who, I'll tell you another example, fifth dimensional awareness of creation. Okay. So he went through a divorce. Mm -hmm. He has two children, young children at the time. They were um, just starting elementary school. So he went through a divorce. His ex-wife is an addict. So he couldn't, so he was the one who had him. So he has two kids. He lost his job, has two kids, went through divorce, and doesn't know what's going, how he's going to go through this. But um, then his grandmother passes away, and she lives many counties over in the middle of nowhere where there's like nobody around. And he inherits 75 acres that he can't do anything with because he can't sell it in the state. It's family property, so you can't sell the land. Oh, wow. You do whatever you want. So now he has this old house, 75 acres in the middle of nowhere. And the nearest person is maybe like two hours away. Oh, gosh. Okay. Where is he going to find work? Right. To take care of these two kids. <laughs> He'll drive these yeah. kids, you know, uh, to school or whatever. So he's like, I don't know what to do. So I said, okay, well, let's, let's, you know, so we, we, we worked it out. Um, his abundance issues and blocks. And basically fast forward. Um, I was like, what do you love to do? And we didn't talk to the hip, you know, hypnosis and everything else. And the, the higher self gave him options as well. But what he loves to do is he's kind of a big pothead. <laughs> okay. He's, he's in the right adult. place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's a big pothead, you know, so he, you know, it's legal in Washington. So he, right, right. he and because he, cause he has these um, medical, he goes to get, he's always on medical marijuana because he has oh. these like major issues. So, but he, so that's his way to relieve the stress or the, the pain in his body. So he loves that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, um, 
that's what you love and he knows everything about it he knows how to grow it he knows how wow. to just you know everything about it so i said here this is what you need to do and this is what the higher self said you need to do you have 75 acres of land that you could do anything with why don't you just follow and this is where you were he was working with synchronicity yeah. so he's like well I don't know if they're ever going to, I don't know anything about business but I'm going to apply for one of those licenses to grow cannabis on my farm yeah. and so he he didn't know anything he just you know he talked to the people and they said fill this out and then they rejected it he said you need this and then he's like oh, okay well I'll go put that up in the property and then said you need this and he's just following the synchronicity and the clues so he got his his license and so he's like okay now what and so uh, and so the next thing is synchronicity happened and, he's, and it, you know, he asked them, well, what do I, I have this license. And they're like, well, now you got to grow it. And they said, okay, well, I'm going to grow it. So he got his friends and everything else. And he started planting 75 acres of cannabis. Wow. And he's like, I, I don't know anything about business. I don't know how to sell this. And, you know, he talked to some people cause you know, network and synchronicity happened. <laughs> and great. they're like, find a sales lead of people who, buy cannabis in bulk yeah. so he worked the leads he sent the email and uh, you know whatever hey i i grow 75 acres of cannabis it's not harvestable until xxx down in the future but um you know whatever whatever and he ended up um uh, getting contracts with small um medical marijuana pharmaceutical companies oh wow and what so they're like opportunity yeah and they're like yeah. And of course they got a killer deal from him because he's brand new, but he's coming from zero money. So he's like, okay. So he got yeah. contracts for harvest that has not even been grown yet. Oh my goodness. And so fast That's forward. That's incredible. Yeah. Fast, and then and then his, some of his friends that kind of live with them and they help with the kids and they take them to school and all that kind of stuff. So the, you know, so, um, so he was able to kind of leverage, um, you know, some of his employees to help with the kids and school and everything else. And um, so all he does all day is just kind of have fun on his farm and they just have little festivals and, you know, he met somebody great yeah, that's and great. he doesn't do anything with it because it's just a herb. It's a weed that grows on its own. All right. um, and then when time comes, the, the people, the people pick who it. Get, yeah. The pharmaceutical company Trim come it. and they bring their own people and they come and harvest it. Oh, right. Yeah. So oh he's my just, God, that's, he doesn't have to do much at all. That's great. Anything. He's doing nothing. <laughs> oh, that's wow. it. That's, that's the life. That's yeah. fifth dimensional awareness is oh, working like with reality, the mirrors in reality. What's the lesson? How mm -hmm. can I leverage this? How can I, you know, whatever, following the leads, following synchronicity as, as you are ready, um, the divine consciousness will present the next thing for you to do. You don't need to know it all. Just, just yeah. do the next thing. Just do the next thing. Do the next thing. I will paint a picture. And before you know it, you've built this reality that was seamless and effortless. Mm. And that's literally what we have to do in our life. It's just, just do the next step. Just do the next yeah. step. Okay. So simple. That. And that's what a lot of people um, as they get into the space, we'll start doing. And um, I mean, it, it, it's just going to be seamless. And it is already seamless if you're already in the space. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you have to kind of have the foundation of how to create and manifest properly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh my gosh, I love that. I love where we're heading because it's not, you know, uh, the doom and gloom that we're, that other people are talking about either. Well, you know, if they like, want to manifest doom and gloom, that they're welcome to manifest doom and gloom and hell in their life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's their lesson. <laughs> that's true. You gotta let people have free will and what they want to create, right? Yeah. yeah. But somebody's doom and gloom does not have to be your doom and gloom. Exactly. Yeah. You have the choice. It's, you can be a conscious creator. And right. so I love that. Yeah. The consciousness and the earth, the consciousness of the earth, which you're an aspect of, has no opinion on how you yeah. use the energies. You can okay. do it any way you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh my because God. consciousness is experiencing self, how mm -hmm. you create from within the tools. So if you want to create experience your reality which is doomsday and hell for you every single day then consciousness experiencing through you well that's different 
<laughs> right. I'm so glad that there's a lot of other ones that are creating much more, I can kind of tune out <laughs> to these people. <laughs> you know, consciousness experience yeah. all aspects of itself through everybody's creation. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you, Vaughn. This has been amazing. This is probably the longest podcast I've done in a while Hello. with anybody. Hello. We've been on here for like, I think, two hours. Oh, we really feel like so fast. I, I could, we could, oh, but yeah. it was just, oh my God, so incredible. And um, gosh, it was just a pleasure and an honor to have you on today. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I've had fun. Oh, me too. Um, and <laughs> just if you could give everybody, I know you probably said this earlier in the show, but just end with everybody with a website for, or wherever you want anybody to go. And right. you probably want people to buy your, your book and then get updated sure, on yeah. your next book, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you're interested, and again, a lot of the material is also presented in my YouTube channel, uh, which is okay. Merkaba Chakras, but the website um, where you can get all my information as well um, is uh, MerkabaChakras.com. And you can just go to Amazon. That's where all my books are. And you can um, just uh, just type in my name, which is Von Galt, V-O-N, and then Galt, G-A-L-T. Um, oh, I didn't. Well, we should don't we talk about fifth dimensional dating. That's hilarious. That's oh, hilarious. yeah. Let's do that. We'll do another show on that. That probably could be a whole show, right? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I attract a lot of 5D um, couples because I do oh, wedding yeah. flowers too on the side. And I have wedding flowers. That's flower, right. I have wedding oh, flower God. books that you can see. And yeah. a lot of my couples, like, it's just so weird. I just like saw him and all of a sudden I just had this vision of all these different lives that I had with him. I'm like, fit. Everything's happening all at once. Oh, <laughs> That's another example. That. So it, it's really, really fun. But you'll, you'll see that on my um, author's page in Amazon that I also kind of do coloring books for kids and I also oh, wow. do bridal bouquet books for people in that. And then, of course, metaphysics for Buddhism. But the one thing I want to leave um, your audience with that I get from my hypnosis clients from the Oversoul or consciousness, the Lord, God, whatever you want to call this energy that goes through everyone and everything it always says the same thing in my client client sessions to me and to them and i sum it up in these simple words the the oversoul wants everyone to know at this time that you've always been enough okay mm -hmm. use the gifts and the resources all around you to create the life that you want to experience a life full of joy and love. And the spirit world will nudge you through synchronicity. You mm. can do it. Okay. So however you want to create your dharma, the tools are there for you. Gosh, thank you. Thank you so much. This oh, you're amazing. welcome. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Well, thank you, Vaughn. Um,